An angel and a demon walk into a barn, one that looks oddly similar to that of when someone tried to monologue die. And what happens? What you would kind of expect of angels and demons. Some action! Ooh, that's a hot mug guy! Hey guys, this is my review for episode 10, Heaven and Hell of Supernatural Season 4. This is the mid-season finale for this season, and it's actually a pretty decent one. There is some character development with Anna, there's some character development with the brothers, the demons and the angels have a head off in this barn, there's a little bit of cool back and forth with Ruby, and the episode ends with one of the most emotionally heartfelt moments in Dean's entire history as a character. I don't mind Heaven and Hell for the most part, if anything it's actually a pretty decent mid-season finale. It doesn't really leave much in terms of questions of what's happening next, it's actually quite definitive. If anything, the only thing that's a little bit of a mystery is what happened to Anna at the end of the episode. This is a pretty clean and cut episode in terms of starting, middle, and end. The brothers, Ruby and Anna, find themselves in the middle of a war between the angels and the demons as they're both fighting over Anna. Anna, who realizes in this episode that she is in fact a fallen angel who chose to fall. This is also something else that would kind of be later established on in season 8, I believe, but really this was the first kind of angel who had an emotional palette, and this character, Anne, is one of the driving forces in terms of changing over Castiel's allegiances from the angels, heaven, to the brothers themselves. Anne is a big influence on Castiel's life as a character. I liked Uriel in this episode too because he shows just how badass angels can be when he's taking out those other demons. And then we get Alistair again, and... Okay, I don't know if it was this actor who was the one who came up with the whole southern accent thing, because the second actor who's gonna come in, he does it a lot better than this guy. This guy kinda sucks, honestly. He's very corny, he's very cheesy. Sure, you could say that the other guy who's gonna take it on is a little bit corny, but he's really intimidating. It's mainly because of the chin. But I feel that the guy who's gonna do Alistair later on in that torture episode, I feel that he does a much more intimidating presence, a uh, much more intimidating routine of the character. This guy wasn't so bad in the last episode, but in this one he gets a lot more time to talk and he's He's just not intimidating, in my opinion. He's a little bit when he's torturing Ruby, but that's because that whole scene is very vulnerable. But otherwise, he's not hes not really there. The fight scene's a little bit cool. I do like how there's some choreography. But then the brothers, when Alistair walks up to Dean, he's like, Ah, you are such a promising pupil. He does this, and Dean's first like, Ah. And then about two seconds into that, they cut to Sam. Ah! There's some odd editing in this episode, and I'm not exactly the biggest fan of it, which is why it's a little bit middling, but then the end of the episode. That drama, man, that drama pulls me in every time they use it, and they've used it so fucking well in this season so far. Because we find out about Dean's time in hell, he actually talks about what happened to him. He talks about being on the rack, essentially being a Prometheus-like legend in hell, with constantly being tortured, having his body be reassembled only to be tortured again the next day, until he eventually succumbs to all of the torture and he begins to do the torturing himself. And Jensen just delivers this scene so well. He has so much emotion, so much torture, so much guilt in his actions, his words, and his mannerisms that he's really portraying a pretty deep and emotional part of his character. It's really hard to watch these performances and these developments and these characters when they meant something because I know it's not gonna matter later on. And much like Wishful Thinking, this episode is brought back up because of Dean talking about it. And maybe now thinking about it, maybe Wishful Thinking was a little bit high in terms of rating because I'm going to give this episode a 6 out of 7. This one is certainly better than Wishful Thinking, but it's a really good episode. While it may not be a great mid-season finale episode, it's a pretty decent one. It's a very good one, if anything. So not 7 material, but again, very good. And I'm looking at the numbers for the season so far, and holy shit, y'all who said that season four was the best one, you aren't kidding. Like, I'm loving this season so far. I don't know why I always look at it so only. Anyways, I asked you guys about your comments about this episode, so let's read those off now. So here are your comments. Heaven and Hell is my favorite written episode, but it's not my favorite episode, if that makes sense. I remember watching this live and being on the edge of my seat thinking what's going to happen, and the whole time... While it doesn't have the best fight scene in all of Supernatural, the dialogue between the angels and the demons is fun. I agree with that. 
I really love the writers for giving them relatability to Sam and Dean's life from their absent father, John. It definitely is an interesting uh, complex that angels require faith in God rather than having a direct link in appearance to him. Yeah, that's a good point. The love scene is cliche, but I still love the comfort in Anna putting her hand on Dean's handprint from Castillo. Ooh. The best scene is by far with Dean describing his time in hell. Rather than having a huge budget of what hell looks like, I really love the attention is brought back to, G to Dean's heartbreak. Apparently, this scene really was an emotional roller coaster for the actor and just needed a break for after doing the same because it was so emotional for him. The waiting wipes for his the waiting wipes his tears of his face with his hands is how he normally wipes his tears, and that's not a hint of cheesiness for me in this scene. It just shows you how flawed and, and human Dean is at, at his most vulnerable point in his life, and usually Dean is closed up with his emotions towards his brother. One of the reasons I really love this show is, is how committed the brothers are to the show and how they've come, how far they've come since season one. That's a really good comment. This is actually a really, really good comment. Heaven and Hell Part Two are is a part two of a great two-parter. We learn so much about the angels banishing sigil, uh, importance of angel grace, hex bags, how angels can become human, angel radio, demons, and were actually scary, Dean Bang and an angel, etc. It was always good to see Pamela Barnes back, even if she does die. This is a solid 6 out of 7 for me. Not the perfect episode, but so important in establishing the angel demon mythology of the show that would go on for the rest of the show's run until Dab eventually retconned it, all of it. It's funny, actually, you got the, the score of this episode dead on. If Castiel was killed when they could have gotten Angel Romance fans for Dean Deanna, lol, instead of Destiel, puts it that a whole new POV, and that made that sex scene Anna and Dean uh, so a romance was planned, but it was scrapped as Castiel became the main vessel. Yeah, I can. I, it does. Anna's turn does suddenly go kind of pointless later on, as we'll eventually see. Heaven and Hell. It's time for Heaven versus Hell or God versus Mothra. Godzilla versus Mothra. This episode further delves into Dean's hell trauma. Dean's portrayal here reminds me of how Castiel's death speech to Dean was. How hollow. Dean was never a saint or a pillar of virtue. Dean is miserable and has been tormented in his life physically and psychologically. Dean is seriously flawed, but that makes his character's victories even more fulfilling when he succeeds. Even though Dean would struggle with making the right decision and he was the more pessimistic of the two brothers, he would still try to be good. Dean is often hopeless in Season 5 and occasionally cynical in Season 7. Dab would later, later ruin this trait by making it non-authentic and hokey. Yes, definitely agree with that. In Season 5, the deck was stacked against Sam and Dean. In Season 7, Dean was fatigued from saving the world multiple times. His insecurity felt much more genuine here than Dad's hack nine hamster in a cage metaphor. Another thing that this episode showcased was that Dean and Sam could outsmart their enemies. I also remember when seeing Sam and Dean tricked Eve with the Phoenix Ash in season six. And then at the same time, and then and the time Sam, Dean, and Henry deceived Abaddon with the Devil's Trap bullets in season eight. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Devil's Trap bullets were always a neat idea that felt underutilized to me. However, upon looking at the wiki, they used Devil Traps bullets more times than I thought they did. Sam and Dean gradually became too dense. Too much hunting. Most of have killed. Most of them have killed <laughs> Sam and, Breen, and Dean's brain cells. Or in Sam's case, it's probably from the repeated head trauma. Yes, I forgot to do that. I was gonna do a count of how many times Sam got knocked out throughout this show, and unfortunately, I failed on that. But he definitely has been knocked out at least a hundred times in the entire show's run. The way I view Heaven and Hell is the same way you view season 11's mid-season premiere. Heaven and Hell is a disappointing follow-up to the great episode. It's not bad, however, it's not great either, especially upon rewatch. Although the third half is great. The third quarter, you mean? Or the third? The third? Oh. The two halves preceding... Yeah, the, we're talking about thirds here. The two uh, thirds preceding it are very boring. Literally 30 minutes of the episode of just people standing around and talking about stuff we already know, like Anna being an angel, her grace. And yeah, let's talk about Anna. I really don't like this character. She, When she remembers she's an angel, she loses all of her personality and charm and becomes a stick in the mud. And I don't blame the actress for this because she is a likable actress. The problem is the direction that they, were, they take with the character. Much like Ruby is either bland or straight up awkward, I never bought her relationship with Dean, and the only reason that it's happening is so that Dean can have an awkward sex scene. I swear that every time Anna takes her grace back, it's like she's orgasming on screen. On screen. What am I watching? The third, um, 
uh, the final third, however, say it somewhat saves this episode because we get a great, awesome demon on Angel action, and of course, Dean's heartfelt confession. It's really so refreshing to see Dean accepting responsibility instead of blaming Chuck for everything. I tear up every time I watch this scene. That's awesome. Thank you guys for your comments. They're much appreciated. And the next episode is Family Remains, episode 11. So make sure to give me you guys' thoughts about that episode in the comments below, and I'll read those off in the next review. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Till then, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign but we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.